Hi everybody. Fad diets, we're on a high protein fad diet. This is what the show is about today. So I'll let you guys start coming in. <sighs> By the way, I had about a hundred people unfollow me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you know you might be onto something is when overnight a hundred people unfollow you. You might have like hit a little sore spot with some companies. So last night I was just telling everybody I, I lost about a hundred followers last night. Um, but um, when I looked at the people that unfollowed me, it was people in the health and wellness field who are plugging the high protein diets. So um, I had a couple of the protein supplements, uh, powder formulas companies, and I'm not gonna say who um, unfollowed me. I had a couple different health coaches that are big on the high protein hype um, unfollow me. Hi everybody. So this is part two. I'm gonna take a lot of questions today. I'm so glad you guys are here. We are in the middle of a high protein fad diet. And I just, as a health coach, I could not stand on the sidelines anymore and allow, not allow, because you know, who's gonna listen to me besides hopefully you guys, um, but, but people are sabotaging their health and they're increasing their rate of inflammation and they're increasing age-related diseases such as um, Alzheimer's and dementia and a lot of different cardiovascular um, issues so neurodegenerative issues so yeah I'm I'm I just I'm telling the truth and you know it's hard to see the forest for the trees and if any of you guys have were you know succumbed to the you know all of the low fat no fat diets in the 80s where we all got fat because they added extra sugar into it um, you know that it's something that it can sabotage your health and Right now, my followers in on this group, I'm assuming, um, and just based on the demographic, we're at an age where you just can't, you can't fuck around with your health, right? You get one shot. You get one shot at doing this. And so when we think that we're doing something healthy for our bodies and we're actually not, that's what, what makes me mad. So um, the winner from last week, um, or not from last week, from yesterday, the winner from yesterday was Cleo Cardone. So Cleo Cardone, you won the body coverage and the big brush. Um, DM me and I will get that to you in the mail. Um, hello from sunny Atlanta. Hello from sunny Los Angeles. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Today we have up for grabs. I'm giving two giveaways because I'm assuming this might be a little bit of a, of a smaller show. First of all, because I lost 100 followers overnight. <laughs> But second of all, because it's kind of part two, so I'm I'm really hoping for a lot of um, for a lot of questions. But I am gonna just I'm gonna break it down. But this is what's up for grabs this time. I'm giving two giveaways. This is by uh, Metacube. This is a Super Silica Daily Quick Mask um, with green tea, all skin types. Love this. It's a big box of these masks. And then I'm also giving away this Airborne Mask Oil Balancing Mask. Um, even if you don't have oily skin. Remember that we need to trick our, our, our skin into making its own moisture. So some of the best ingredients like retinoids in anti-aging skincare were designed for oil prevention, for acne, right? It's in those times of deprivation, and in this case, deprivation of hydration, that we end up um, producing that oil ourselves. Hi, Beauty Realized. Hello, hello. I was just going over the giveaway. So the giveaway this for today is the Super Silica Daily Quick Mask as well as the Airborne Mask. This is the oil balancing mask. And I was just saying how even if you don't have oily skin, in times of deprivation, your skin will come and make oil from within. And so the best anti-aging ingredients oftentimes dry your skin out. So don't be afraid of stuff that is made for acne retinoids were actually made for acne. So this is the giveaway for today. Hello, everybody. Make sure that you um, invite your three people right there with the send button. And that is your first thing, your first task to be in the giveaway. Once I post this feed to my, um, aw, once I post this uh, live to my regular feed, um, you'll tag three more people. Remember that I used, I'm using a different system and picking the winners now. So the more, if you're tagging three people, put them on different lines. And the more you comment, 
the higher chance that you have of winning. This week's winner was Cleo Cardone, or yesterday's winner, who won the Westmore Beauty Body Makeup with the brush. And I looked back and Cleo Cardone had a ton of different uh, questions and a, a lot of different stuff and she ended up winning. So it did in increase her, chat, her chances. Okay, you guys, um, can you do what you eat in a day, please? Especially now that you've had a series of high proteins being a fat. Yeah, um, I can. So let's just start there. Let's start with what, what I eat in a day. And I, I'm a lot less concerned with what I eat in a day than what you would think as a holistic nutrition and health coach and a gerontologist. Um, I'm spending almost, I wanna say almost zero time counting my, my protein. And the reason is because if you asked your doctor, when was the last time they treated somebody for protein deficiency, I would imagine it would be not in their lifetime. Not in their lifetime. People with eating disorders, that's a different story because you're just lacking food in general. But any type of food, not any type, but whole foods, vegetables, all of that stuff, we, we, are, we are consuming way too much protein. So I've been doing intermittent fasting for about 30 years now. So I don't necessarily eat until probably about 1 or 2 p.m. And I can do a whole live on intermittent fasting. But again, when we, when we think about it in terms of longevity, we want to be, have our, our, our bodies be in a state of deprivation. And when we're, do, we're, when we're in a state of deprivation, all of a sudden our bodies start working a lot more. So I've been on a 16-8 fast for 30 plus years, meaning I have a 16 hour window of not eating, which starts at night, goes through my eight hours of sleep and lands me right at about 1 p.m. So whether I work out or not, um, I try to work out a little bit later so that I can, I have that, you know, food that I can eat afterwards, but I, I work out on an empty stomach. I don't eat until 1 PM and that causes my body to reach into its fat cells for energy. That's called ketosis. In the keto diet, you do not need to eat fat to burn fat. It doesn't work that way. What do we think is on our bodies? What's stored around our midsection? What's stored on our hips and our butts, ladies? That's fat. Those are fat cells. It's very easy to use fat cells for energy when we're depriving ourselves of glucose, of just continually, you know, reaching in a pantry, reaching in a refrigerator. Food is at our beck and call. Our bodies are not designed that way. They're just not. We're not supposed to have food 24 hours a day and only while we, while we sleep. You know that whole breakfast is the most important meal of the day? It's perpetuated by the people that are making all the breakfast cereals. Look, if you go into our supermarkets, our supermarkets, you only wanna shop the exterior of the supermarket. That's where all the fresh food lives. That's where all the real food lives. You get into the middle section of the supermarket, you've got protein written on, on boxes to get us to buy it when you've got other, other things like this made out of red lentils, which are just a, a, a real food, a healthy food, has more protein than the white pasta with, made with dwarf wheat that increases our, our sugar of our body. Our, our body cannot tell the difference between eating something like this and eating regular table sugar. That's how messed up our food supply chain is right now with our wheat. So when you're, when you're talking about fad diets, and I will get back to what I eat in a day. I'm just going to kind of interlace this all through. And if you guys have any questions, please throw them at me because I know that what I'm saying, and especially based on the 100 people that unfollowed me yesterday, <laughs> I know that what I'm saying is not mainstream. That's what's be that. Is the, uh, that is literally the definition of being in a fad diet. We are, we are being bombarded by marketing. People are lining their pockets. Manufacturers are lining their pockets on this high protein diet, right? When did we ever think that a, a candy bar, which this is, now they're very good tasting candy bars, but a candy bar like this that has 20 grams of protein, when did we think that we would go 
when we were younger and buy this many candy bars and eat them. But now all of a sudden they've got 20 grams of protein and we feel like, oh, this is a great snack. This is not a great snack. This is a substitute for a candy bar. That's all it is. And we're having too much protein in our diets. So, you know, like I was saying, hi, Gina, good morning. That's my best friend who just jumped on. Yay, you didn't unfollow me. Gina, I had 100 people unfollow me last night. Yeah, um, I'm not, somebody says I'm not a big pasta eater, but when I buy, when I buy Italian, buy Italian pasta. 100%, and listen, I'm not saying that we should not be eating pasta. I'm not saying that. I think, we, I think everything in a, is a balance, right? But the thing that really pisses me off as a health coach is we're, we're, we're succumbing to the information that is given to us from the manufacturers of said products. Who is telling us that we need one gram of protein per pound per day? People who are manufacturing protein powders. Um, people who are manufacturing things like this. People who decide, hey, listen, I'm gonna put protein on a box and see if I can get people to buy more of it. You know what? We do buy more of it. We also eat more of it. Um, I, I told you guys yesterday, I, you know, I fell into the, I would say the only fad diet that I really was like, okay, this is, this might be something good. And, and I, I was tricked for a long time was the low fat, no fat. And that was at a time when they weren't putting the grams of sugar in on the packaging. So they would never put the recommended daily allowance on the packaging. And the whole thing was about fat. Don't eat fat, don't eat fat, you won't get fat. Well, guess what? You have an excess of sugar, guess what it's stored as? Fat. You have an excess of protein, guess what it's stored as? Fat. It's stored as fat. So we have to think about this in a way that you can't eat fat, you can't eat fat to make fat, doesn't work that way. You don't eat protein to make protein, doesn't work that way. Everything goes through our digestive system. So we have to digest it just like regular, just like anything. Anything that we eat goes through our digestive system. We're not gonna all of a sudden, you know, make a ton of carbohydrates in our body. Our whole body is made out of protein. We, got, we grab protein from this as well. Um, an avocado, this has all of the essential amino acids that you need. Essential meaning, as ones that your body doesn't make. Our body makes its own protein in times of deprivation. But when you're adding all of this protein to your diet, your body does not have the ability to, to get rid of those damaged proteins. A lot of them are in our brains, but they don't get rid of those damaged proteins. Those build up and accumulate and we don't have the ability to do autophagy, which is when we go in, we take the damaged proteins, we restructure them, and we utilize them. So we've got all these senescent cells, these zombie cells that are just piling up because we are putting, I mean, according to what I should be eating, 110 grams of protein a day. I'm 110 pounds, um, and I'm, a, I'm very active. I do lift weights but I'm not on a high protein diet. Now, what manufacturers would have us believe, everybody's so quiet out there, it's kind of freaking me out. I'm thinking like, are, are people unfollowing me as I speak? I just lost another one. Um, but yes, so, <laughs> so this is what happened last night. It's, it's, not a, it's, it's hard to see the forest for the trees, you guys. It's really hard to see the forest for the trees. And as a health coach, as a gerontologist, I, I'm really, I, it really upsets me that we're perpetuating a diet that is not great for us. It's not great for us. An excess amount of protein, like if you were looked at, at the Harvard uh, Medical School, School studies, they're saying that we should be getting um, between, what was it, point, uh, point 0.31 and point 0.36, no, point 0.36 grams per pound. 0.36 grams of protein per pound. That's Harvard, right? That's Harvard. Those are people that are doing the studies, you know, double blind, placebo, real experimental studies 
on protein. What they have found is that at point, at what was it again? 0.36 grams per uh, grams of protein per my body weight per pound. You add a little bit more if you're lifting weights or you're very active. You add a little bit more if you're over the age of 65 to combat sarcopenia where our fat infiltrates our muscle and becomes a little bit more difficult to lose weight after that age. But until that time, the recommended daily allowance by Harvard, by the, by the people in the longevity industry that are doing actual experiments, third party experiments, peer, you know, uh, filtered kind of experiments, not somebody who works for a protein company or an Atkins diet type of, of company and are doing their own experiments that are not peer tested, waiting until they get the right results and then put, pushing it onto the public. That's not okay. It's not okay. And it's causing a lot of us to have be hyper um, sensitive to, well, I don't even want to, I don't think I even want to get into the insulin resistance because that is like, whew, that's gonna go a little too far. That might be a whole other life. I appreciate you guys still listening. I really do thank you guys so much. Um, if, you, if you are finding this interesting, please. Oh, uh, Cleo, you won this. Congratulations. <laughs> I was waiting for you to jump on. This was the giveaway for yesterday. Cleo Cardone, you won the Westmore Beauty um, body coverage with the, the brush. I didn't want to take it out of here because I didn't want to get it dirty for you. But um, DM me your, your uh, address. I'll get this in the mail. Up for grabs today. We have the Skin Medica sheet mask as well as the oil balancing mask by Airborne. So these are two different giveaways for today. So make sure you invite your three people. Um, and when I post this to my feed, tag your three people. Okay, back to where we were. Um, so according to Harvard and according to um, people in the leaders in the field of, somebody asked me yesterday what my ring was about, just kind of off topic because I just noticed it. Um, I'm getting sized for the aura ring. So I want to like check my glucose uh, and check my, my, so I'm going to, I'm looking into a glucose monitor, the aura ring for my sleep and activity level and all of that stuff. So this is like a sizer. I'm trying to figure out what size. Um, Cleo said, oh my God, I never win anything. Thank you, sweetheart. Sorry, I'm late today. So excited. Oh, well, I'm so glad you're here and congratulations. You know, I, I'm trying to get away from a lot of the affiliate marketing that I've been doing over the last couple years. Um, and I'm just, I'm having people send me products and I'm giving them away to you guys because I'd rather be on this end of it. Um, what's the aura ring? It's kind of like the Apple watch type of situation. This is just a plastic sizer for me. So I'm trying to get used to like, do I really like it on this hand? Is this the right size for me? Um, and then you can get it in a bunch of different colors and it helps, um, it, it, it all hooks up to like this program and you find out how am I sleeping? How much REM do I have? What's my activity, activity level? Um, heart rate variability, there's a lot of stuff like that that these kind of devices are now, the wearable devices are now coming up. And I should do that in another live. I wanna wait till I get my ring and when I get my glucose monitor and that kind of stuff. But this is what our, this is the cutting edge stuff of longevity. What we're stuck in now is the marketing bullshit that people think that we need and that people are lining their pockets. Manufacturers are lining their pockets from the high protein diet craze and we are lining our whole vascular system. And we're building up these kind of senescence zombie cells because we're not deprived of protein and when we have a slight deprivation of protein, now this is not me just talking out of my ass. This is, and so, pardon my cussing, and if anybody can tell me that, you know, but it's just, I'm sorry, I'm passionate about this subject because people are getting sick. People are getting sick and people are, are decreasing their health span. You're decreasing your health span, you're taking years off of your life if you're gonna stick with a high protein diet. Now, manufacturers are not gonna back me up on that, a lot of health coaches and a lot of trainers have fallen right into this. Um, they're fallen right into this trap, but I guarantee you there is going to be a big pendulum swing, swing. Like in every diet fad 
since the 60s, I was born 68, in every diet fad, there is a pendulum swing, right? So we were on a no fat, low fat diet, then all of a sudden sugar's the enemy. We're on a no sugar, add the good fats. There is going to be a, a pendulum swing because most of the time when we're dealing with diet, when we're dealing with food, it's the one thing that like everybody has to eat and everybody thinks that they're an expert on what to eat, right? And I'm not an expert on what to eat, but I know who to pay attention to. And so you wanna pay attention to the leaders in this field, not somebody who's, you know, I don't wanna, and you know what, I don't wanna like call, I don't wanna call anybody out. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, you don't wanna take your cues from corporations who are making big promises um, and you want to just question everything. And I think that if, if nothing else, I hope that what you walk away with from this, these two days of lives is to question everything. And I wanna give you an example of this. And I will get back to what I eat in a day and maybe that's another live. But also too, if you guys are, are benefiting from this at all, if you, if you understand kind of what I'm saying and it helps you open your eyes to where you start questioning what really is healthy and who should I be taking my cues from? It's definitely not, not the supermarket and it's definitely not packaging, right? It's definitely not that. Um, who should I be? But if you are, if this is something that you're like, I want to get to the bottom of it. What is optimal health? What am I supposed to be eating? Can you please cut through all of this marketing bullshit? Look at these. Paleo puffs. Paleo puffs. What? In, in what world is this supposed to be healthy? And what, does this make us buy, buy more? Yeah. If you would never buy a cheese puff in your life, if you're like, I, I haven't eaten a cheese puff since I was like a teenager, might you buy a paleo cheese puff? Yeah. You might. You might. That's how it works. That's how we get tricked into eating stuff with the, the diet buzzwords on them that keeps expanding our waistline and making us sicker. Now, I've, got, I've had a lot of people say, oh, I lost weight on this diet and I lost weight on that diet. Well, you're coming to me for advice. So it, it obviously did not stick. And there's a reason for that. And I don't mean that in a sassy way. So I, I apologize if it came out like that. But um, I'm just saying hi to everybody. So there's a reason why um, it's a yo-yo diet. We're in a yo-yo diet, you know, um, culture. And that's because diets don't, don't work. And so if you're looking at the fad diets over the years, then you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, right? The low fat, low, you know, no fat diet didn't work. Adkins doesn't work. South beach diet doesn't work. They do for a, for a limited amount of time. And here's why. If you are somebody who is eating, I'm just gonna pull them out. I've got my Tate's chocolate chip cookies. Um, I used this as a prop yesterday. This is the gluten-free Tate's chocolate chip cookies. Because gluten, you know, gluten-free is only really for celiac disease, but when you, you put a buzzword, when it becomes associated with health, you put a buzzword on a package of cookies, even if you don't have celiac disease, even if you're not gluten sensitive, you're more likely to buy this. This is marketing. These are people being paid tons of money to be creative and what sells. And you know what? We're buying it. We're buying it and we're eating it. So that's kind of what that situation is. But when we're talking about fad diets, why do people lose weight right away? Because if you go from eating this to all of a sudden you need to be on a high protein low carb diet. So you're adding meats, you're adding cheeses, you're adding milks, you're, you're adding protein powder powders, and you're adding all of these protein bars. Nobody should be eating protein bars. You guys, I'm sorry. Nobody should be eating protein bars. It's, it's a, it's a glorified candy bar with more protein that it should be treated as such. It should be treated as such, okay? Somebody says, it's crazy. I was just at a store and it's beyond crazy. I've seen one product after another with false labels and it's sad because a lot of people fall in and they literally need to do the research. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's a disservice. It's a disservice to us 
you know, Americans who are browsing the supermarket stores. It's a disservice. And it, this is going to sound really bad, but there was a beef, last night after I got done with the live and um, I, I started looking into just different magazine articles, not scientific journals, but magazine articles. And I'm going to get back to why people lose weight on Adkins and South Beach and all of that stuff in a second. So it's still in here somewhere. Um, but I, I started looking up magazine articles of how much protein you need. And places like Healthline were saying, you know, you can take up to one gram per uh, of protein per pound per day. That's 110 grams of protein for me. That is going to shorten my life. It just is. That's what the research says. That's what the scientific research says. Okay. So it's perpetuated. Not only is it in our grocery stores, it's perpetuated. Our health food stores are one of the worst places to shop because we wrongfully assume that everything on the other side of those sliding glass doors, if it's in a health food store, is healthy. And so the biggest place to fall into the traps of, of keto, paleo friendly, you know, paleo puffs, high protein, all of this is in a health food store because we wrongfully assume that whatever's in there is healthy and it's causing us to buy more, it's causing us to eat more. So we need to be aware of like, what are they putting on packaging, you know, to make us, to make us buy it and make us consume it. So let me get back to, so it's not only perpetuated in the, it's already not only in our face, literally eye level in supermarkets, row after row after row, but it's perpetuated by health coaches who aren't getting their, their information in the right places. They're not talking to professors in leading longevity centers. They're not talking to doctors who aren't just giving prescriptions for illnesses, but are actually doing the research to figure out metabolically what is the best thing that we can be doing to expand our health span and increase that lifespan. And that's what I do as a health coach. That's what I feel my job is as a health coach, is to cut through all of this bullshit that we are bombarded, bombarded with, to get you to look in the right direction, to see through some of these fad diets so you, you're not hit with it again. Because a fad diet creates this yo-yo. Fad diet, oh, it works for a little bit. Oh, doesn't it's not sustainable. Fad diet. This type of weight loss is so bad for your metabolism. You want to increase your fat over the years? Keep yo-yo dieting. Keep looking for the fad diet. Keep looking for the quick fix. That's what causes this and your set point comes higher and higher and higher until you've got metabolic disease, until you've got type two diabetes. It's, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. So for the hundred people that unfollowed me last night, fine. For you guys that are on here right now, I thank you for listening. I hope, oh my God, I hope that you, you can make some changes because that's what we need to do. We, we, we have to know that people's pockets are being lined at the expense of our health. Make sure you're looking in the right place. You're asking the right questions, right? You got to be smart about it. You can't just passively, don't just passively let things into your body without really finding out, is this the best thing for me? Thank you guys so much. Yes, I did look at Golo. Absolutely, Hunter agree. I also did you check out the Golo I sent you yesterday. I did, and I was going to use it as an example, Cleo. I did, and it's so interesting that you won because you. But you did, you know, you did end up posting a lot. You asked a lot of questions. I just had it here. Where'd it go? Okay, so let me just. I don't know where it, where it went. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So I did look at this, and I was going to say as a health coach. I do feel that that is my job. My job is to cut through the bullshit for you guys so that you are 
really doing something that is healthy, not just what you feel is healthy. Because people's, we, we are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as a nation um, in the name of health, trying to be healthy, thinking we're doing the right thing. That's fucked up. It's really, uh, it makes me so mad. It's really, it's really messed up. So when you're looking for these things and you're looking to fiber, oh, uh, sorry, yes, fiber. If you, had, if you had to count anything, count your fiber. Get your fiber in. Fiber is our friend, Stacy. Fiber is our friend, and I'll tell you why. And then I, we're gonna get to this. We're gonna get to this as well. Like, I'm glad I did two days because there's a lot, there's a lot of content. Fiber is our friend. So when you eat, let's, I'm just gonna use an orange juice and an orange. If you drank a hundred calories of orange juice, that orange juice that's lacking the fiber is gonna hit your bloodstream so quick, your pancreas doesn't know what to do with it, it shoots it out as fat. Nobody should be drinking juice. Oh, some people, a lot of people are gonna hate me. Nobody should be drinking juice. Our bodies aren't made to juice things. If you're gonna, if you like to drink like a smoothie and you want all the fiber in there, that's way better. That's way better. I know that there's a lot of people that are on the go and they, they don't have the time to like sit down and eat like a meal. If you wanna put something in a Nutribullet where you've got all the fiber in there, great. But if you're juicing, you're taking all of that fiber out. And when we add fiber into our diet, so let's just take it for, again, we're gonna have a glass of juice, 100 calories of juice, the so same caloric, 100 calories of juice, 100 calories of orange segments. No, oh, this is a grapefruit, but you get the point. 100 calories of orange segments, 100 calories of juice, same calories, okay? I'm not saying amount, I'm saying calories, 100 calories of juice, 100 calories of oranges. The orange juice will be stored as fat. The oranges that have all that fiber, the way that that, fiber, that, that sugar hits your bloodstream is mitigated by the fiber, it is slowed down. And if you want to, to really control your weight, start adding as many high fiber foods as you can, real foods, I'm not saying look for packaged foods that have fiber in them, real foods that have high fiber content. You can also take a fiber pill. Listen, I sometimes will take a fiber pill. If I know, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that, um, I'll take a fiber pill because the fiber will automatically mitigate the way that that sugar hits my bloodstream and it's a far less chance of being stored as fat. So fiber is our friend. Okay, let's get back to this diet. I'm sending so many people your lives and your follow. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Oh, and Sophia just joined. Hi, thank you. We were just talking about um, fiber and how fiber is our friend and that might be a whole different live, but Cleo had asked about this Golo, um, and I printed this out because this is always a red a red flag to me when you get a when you get a, a diet that wants to sell you a bottle of their product for fifty nine ninety nine and two bottles for ninety nine ninety, and I don't know what the bottle is, but it has to do with insulin resistance. So it makes me think like, is it a derivative of metformin? Is it? Somewhere in between, you know, we did that live on all the weight loss shots on Wegovi, on Ozempic, on Metformin, which you consume um, orally. And so um, it makes me think that it's possibly a derivative of like a Metformin, but I don't know. But the thing that was like, it had me hooked, I wanna say Cleo, this, this Golo had me hooked on the first couple paragraphs when it said, I wanna fight through, I wanna, I wanna fight through all the marketing that you're bombarded with. I wanna fight through all of that and get you really being conscious of slipping into fad diets. It had me hooked. But then it said, uh, we created this life plan, very flexible, easy to follow, where you get to choose the foods you like to eat instead of starving your body. Deprivation is good for us. That's what helps with autophagy. Autophagy is when we've got those proteins in our body that are damaged and in times of deprivation, our body goes in 
and cleans those up, uses them for parts, restructures them, and makes them healthy again. That's in times of deprivation. Deprivation is good, which is why I do the 16-8 fast, which is why every few months I do that prolong five-day fast, which is like 800 calories a day. It's in times of deprivation that we clean out all of that bad stuff. We can restructure all of those proteins. You'll have a lot less chance of Alzheimer's, dementia, neurodegenerative diseases, inflammation on a low protein diet, on times of deprivation, if you fast in a smart way. Um, I think I, I don't know if I did a, a live just on intermittent fasting, but I can do that as well. Okay, this is where they had me, uh, where, where Cleo, this is where I was like, mm, no. Um, so they said, you get to choose what you like to eat. Um, already, that's like, hmm, uh, are you choosing Oreo cookies? Are you choosing Doritos? Like, what are you choosing? Um, and then it says, we focus on whole, affordable foods like butter, eggs, whole milk and cheese, meats, fruits, vegetables, and grains, including bread and pasta. I'm sorry. This is a no. This is a no. That's a no. So if they would have said, we focus on, and the first words would have been, real food, high fiber, fruits and vegetables, small amounts of meat, healthy fats, they would have had me. And then I would have asked, well, what the hell is this, right? So this is what it means when we, we raise our spidey senses, raise, our, raise your spidey sense and start figuring out like, is this, is this good or not? Now I see my thing is on the Golo. Um, how can I? How can a 240 pound man eat the same thing as a woman? She's 130. I mean, do you eat the same portions and the same thing? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And when it comes to protein, when it comes to the high protein diet, that's why it's it's it is proportional to to how much weight you are and and a little bit of activity. So again, those those Harvard studies um, and all the leaders in the longevity field, um, scientists in the longevity field, it is a 0.36 grams of protein per pound. How much protein should we eat daily? Wow, we're simpatico. Um, it's 0.36 grams per my body weight, grams of protein per my body weight per day. For me, that's between 30 and 40 grams of protein a day. You know how easy that is for me to do that? Yet you pick up one of these things, that's half my protein in a day from a bar. From a bar. And just because we eat protein doesn't mean that it's gonna go to your muscle. Just like when you drink collagen, it doesn't mean it's gonna go to your skin. It still goes through our digestive process, right? So when you're, so if you're just looking at the science of it, and you're not looking, well, this is where I might lose some people. <clears throat> there's a high protein diet. There's what's a, what is recommended. So high protein's up here. For me, that's 110 grams of protein a day. Insanity, insanity that we don't think that that's gonna somehow mess up our system when in caveman days, there's no way we ate 100, I would eat 110 grams of protein a day. There's no way that that would happen. But according to the high protein diet, that's what I should be eating is 110 grams of protein a day. Now, according to science and what is really healthy, let's just take the Harvard studies, um, those are 0.36 grams of protein per pound per day. That's what I should be eating. Now, there are some professors, some, I say professors because he happened to be one of my professors, Dr. Walter Longo, who made the five-day prolon fast, if you're interested in that, please just download me, Prolon, or DM me Prolon, and I'll get you that link. Um, I don't do a lot of affiliate marketing, but when things like this are are really, I've researched them and I and I know that it's effective and it's healthy and it's leading to longevity. Um, if I can get you guys a little bit of a discount, I always try to do that. Um, so, oh my God, if I ate that much protein, I, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's in, it's really kind of, it's really insane. And so what happens if you think I have to get my protein, I have to get my protein, I have to get my protein, you're gonna eat more. You're gonna eat more. You're gonna try to get that protein in when you might not otherwise have been hungry. Maybe you didn't need protein. 
So that's what it that's what it does. This you need a certain amount of protein to get your proteins in. Guess what it causes you to to look for? You're looking for protein all the time. Our bodies aren't supposed to be like that. So just from the science behind like the the actual scientific studies, we're looking at 0.36 grams per of protein per pound per body weight. You up it a little bit if you're a weightlifter or you're super active or endurance trainers, you up it a little bit. If you're over 65, you up it a little bit, but that's the basic thing, 0.36 grams per pound. And then you have these little adjustments. Now, other, other people that are really top, top scientists in the longevity field, like Dr. Walter Longo, um, they're proponents for a low protein diet. This is that pendulum swing that I was telling you guys about, right? We went from no fat, low fat, where they added all this hidden sugar to all of a sudden fat is good for us, healthy fats and sugar's the enemy. That's a pendulum swing. The same thing is gonna happen with protein. And I want you guys to be on the right side of that because if we keep going down this path, I'm just telling you what the science shows. If we keep going down this path, we are not allowing our body to work in its top ability. We're letting those damaged proteins accumulate in our brain, which leads to dementia, which leads to Alzheimer's, which leads to neurodegenerative disease, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease. These are all made worse by high protein diets. So real scientists in the field where, um, like Dr. Walter Longo, who's the head of longevity center at USC, where I graduated from um, as a gerontologist, he, he is a proponent for low protein diet. And what he suggests is 0.31 grams to 0.36 grams per pound. And for me, that gets me between 30 and 40. So between 30 grams of protein and 40 grams of protein, anything more than that is detrimental to my health. I might not see it right now, what I might see right now is indigestion after I eat. I might, I might feel um, a, a bit of a brain fog. I might have a bit of a distended belly from excess protein. Um, I might have indigestion. I might have bad breath, regardless of flossing or dental uh, appointments. If you've got bad, bad breath, you need to look at your, at your protein. You need to look at your protein. So low protein diet, a low protein diet. And listen, we can start at baby steps here, you guys. Just start, just start using those new levels of protein. Start looking at, for your body weight, and I wanna, I wanna be clear about this. When, when Dr. Walter Longo talks about your body weight, he takes out, I don't know if you guys can see me. If you've got visceral fat around here, <laughs> and you're looking for how much protein do you need, you don't count that fat. You don't count that fat. So it's less protein. If you're somebody who's obese, if you've got type, type two diabetes, if you've got type one diabetes, if you're, if you're overweight, if your circumference as a woman is, is more than 30 inches around your waist and for a man more than 40 inches around your waist, we're looking at a meta metabolic problem there, right? Your, your body is getting, is getting too much, too much sugar, too much protein, too much whatever, and spitting it out of sugar around your midsection. And that's fat, visceral fat around your organs and everything. So when you try to figure out how much protein do I actually need, take off a few pounds for that fat around your stomach because that does not need any protein, right? We wanna reach into that fat for energy. And we wanna start reaching in and making that fat really active. We want active fat. The only way to do that is in times of deprivation. So these the people that are proponents of the low protein diet, which again, I think is gonna be that pendulum swing, 
you want to be between 0.31 and 0.36 grams of protein per pound. Can you please say again how you calculate the protein intake? Yes, so you would take 0.3, so if you're gonna do a low protein diet, let's just start with what Harvard recommends, the 0.36. You'd go 0.36, just take out your, well, don't do it now on your phone, because you might leave me. <laughs> um, but you do a 0.36 times, for me, would be 110. That's how much I need in terms of protein, consume protein. That is far less than what we are learning from health magazines, getting their information in the wrong places, health coaches who are getting their information in the wrong places, and the packaging that we're bombarded with. Even if you get a protein powder, look at the protein powder. When they say how, many, how much they recommend, I guarantee you the serving size is giving you way more protein than what you need in a day. That's hurting your health. Protein holds me, holds me over during intermittent fasting where as carbs do not. Okay, I understand that. And, and yes, in times when you're like, you're gonna lose it. Reach for a, don't reach for this shit. Reach for a, a handful of nuts, almonds or walnuts something like that, that has protein, but also fiber and also fat. Drink a glass of water, step back for a bit. Step back for a bit. It takes your stomach a little bit to tell your brain, I'm full. But if you gave me 20 minutes after you had that handful of nuts and a glass of water, 20 minutes, I guarantee you, you're not gonna be hungry. You gotta let it just, let it go. because we're way, we're getting way too much protein. So just do that configuration. I wish I could, if I could write backwards, that would be cool, but I don't think I can do that. No, I don't think I can do that. I'm not that talented. <laughs> it's 0.36 times your body weight. Um, I like that you swear, love your passion and honesty, thank you. I'm five foot one and weigh 104. I was 20 pounds heavier last year and I'm 57. Let me, you know what? Great. I'm, I'm so glad that you're getting down there because, we, I mean, listen, you're going to live longer. You're going to live longer and you're going to expand the health span if we can get our weight under control. And that, that does not mean following fad diets. Um, somebody says, shouldn't an overweight person consume their macros of their desired weight versus their current weight? I am not one to count macros. Macros are proteins, fats, carbohydrates. And you're supposed to get in a certain amount at each time of day and blah, blah, blah. There's so many reasons not to count your macros. Just eat real food, right? Just eat real food. Cook with, real, with, with healthy oils, with olive oils. It's like a Mediterranean diet or the Okinawa diet. It is predominantly plant-based eat as much fresh fruits, vegetables as you, as you want. Don't juice them, eat the fiber with it. Intermittent fast. If you're gonna, if you, if you start, let's say you're, you're on about a 16 hour or 12 hour intermittent fast and you are gonna break down and eat something, eat a handful of nuts, wait a, wait a second, take, it, take a step back. Let that kind of just, let your body figure out if it's hungry or not. For all of you guys joining me, um, uh, I wish I could just start over, but I can't. Um, if you wanna be in the drawing, make sure that you invite your three people by that little button right here. This is what's up for grabs. It's uh, by, by MetaCube, it's a super silica daily quick mask. And this by Airbon, which is uh, an oil balancing mask. So these two are up for grabs today. Make sure you invite your three people. And when I post this to my site, tag three more people. What do you break your fast with at 1 p.m.? Anything, food. Normally, I will, I will have like, um, I'll do like a vegetable stir fry and a little bit of brown rice maybe. It just depends. I, I honestly, the, the, we are, our diet industry is so fucked up. It really makes us think about our food so much. And when you're thinking about your food so much, you're, you just get obsessed with it. You just keep, you're, you're, you're just like food, 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 food. 
our bodies are made to go many, uh, many, many, many days without food. Not that I want you guys to do that. I would never say that. Um, but it's in times of deprivation that our body it really excels. We have, we are, we are so, we are this amazing that we can eat an avocado and get all the essential amino acids that we need because our body will make the rest. How amazing is that? That's like, yet marketers are gonna to try to get us to buy a protein powder. We don't need it. We don't need it. Excess protein gets stored as fat. Just like excess sugar. Excess protein gets stored as fat. And it doesn't leave us slightly, hi Romanian girl 10, it doesn't leave us, it doesn't leave us deprived. And it's in times of deprivation that we, that our body excels. In times of deprivation, we go into, it's called autophagy, we go and we get all of that misshaped, old, decrepit protein structures use them for parts, hygiene, and make healthy protein. That's what we're capable of doing. If we're not bombarding ourselves with 110 grams of protein a day. We don't need it, you guys. I need 30 to 40 grams of protein today. For me to get 30 to 40 grams of protein today, I don't even have to think about what I'm eating. I just have to eat. I aim for whole foods always organic. That's a whole other live. Um, because pesticides will make you gain weight, cause inflammation, cause age related diseases. That's a whole other thing. But we don't need, uh, but don't we need more protein as we age? We do. We do over the age of 65. So if you just use this formula, let's just do the regular scientific formula by Harvard. Forget about the low protein for now, although that's what I'm on. I'm on a low protein. Just let's get off of the high protein. Let's get our shit together and just go like, wait a second, what are we doing here? We're not designed to have that much protein. Our bodies aren't like that. We're designed to have, we're hunter and gatherers, right? We're designed to have a bunch of different vegetables, a bunch of different nuts and seeds, a lot of water, and occasionally we killed an animal. That's what our bodies are designed to do. And when we go long times without, without food, um, and you can do that through intermittent fasting. I've been doing intermittent fasting for 30 years now. I don't eat until about 1 or 2 p.m. And your body, somebody had said earlier, I, I feel like protein fills me up during intermittent fasting. Well, first of all, intermittent fasting, you shouldn't be eating anything because it's literally your fasting. But that protein uh, makes them feel fuller than carbohydrates, that goes away. That goes away because your, your liver is capable of making glucose, just like our body is capable of making what we're not getting from food in terms of protein, our liver makes glucose. So in times of deprivation, we can make our own glucose where you're not feeling hungry. I've been doing this for so long, I don't feel hungry until about one or two. Sometimes at one or two, I'm like, okay, I really should eat. Because I, my body is already doing what it's supposed to do. It's working on autophagy. It's utilizing the proteins that are already there. It's utilizing my fat cells for energy. This is how you get your body working like it did when it was younger. We get our body, our metabolism, working like it did when it was younger. We clean out all of that cellular debris. That's gonna decrease inflammation in our body. It's going to decrease the rate of Alzheimer's and dementia and neurodegenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Huntington's, all of that goes way down with a low protein diet. Now the low protein diet I follow is between 0.31 grams of protein and 0.36 grams of protein per pound. I'm 110 pounds. So that's, I'm, I'm consuming between 30 and 40 grams of protein a day. I guarantee you, I probably sometimes go, go more than that because I do, I do have a big appetite and I do eat a lot of food, but my foods are just, they're predominantly 
plant-based. How do you feel working out in the AM before you've eaten? Fantastic. I feel weak if I don't eat something before. You will get used to that. You will, you will get used to that. Now, people that, that are, shouldn't be on an intermittent fasting diet, if, you, if you're hypoglycemic, if you have to take medications super early in the morning um, that your life depends on, but you can still do that in a way, you can still take like, there's ways to do that where you take a small, a teeny amount of food, take your medication, and then go about your fast. It's enough to where the glucose isn't going to make a big difference. Um, if you have to take medication in the morning, you will get used to, to that because your liver is not, if you're completely always eating, always eating, beck and call, you know, 16 hours a day you're eating, your liver's not making glucose because it's always in your bloodstream. But when your liver starts making glucose, when your body gets used to fasting, you don't feel that hunger. Lots of water, lots of liquids, green tea. I drink at least, oh, I don't have my bigger one. Um, I drink at least two or three containers of green tea um, in the morning. Always liquids, liquid, liquid, liquid. Just nothing with calories. You can drink black coffee as well. Just not, not with the milk and sugar and anything like that. Okay, are there any more questions? Um, I wish, I mean, it's a, it's a big, this is a big subject. I know it's a big, it's a big subject. Um, and if, please, you guys, DM me if you have any questions. I'm thinking about possibly doing like a group Facebook course or something like that. Um, if you're somebody who is, who, you know, you want to get to the bottom of this, you're, you're unhappy with how you're feeling, um, hire me as a, as a, do a one-on-one -on -one consultant with me. Um, we, we're in there for an hour. We're zooming. I look at everything from your skin to what you're putting in your body. And it, the, my goal as a health coach is to not only cut through all this bullshit that we're being fed and to make sure that you're, you're actually doing something healthy for your body. But my goal isn't to work with you for years. My goal is to make these little tweaks, put you on a health trajectory to where you're going to expand that health span, which is the number of healthy years on the planet without disease and without you know, medications, functioning, happy, healthy, all of that. Expand that health span and increase your lifespan. That's what I do, that's my job. So if you're interested in that, in my link tree, you can sign up for my newsletter, but you can also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We get a lot done in an hour, you guys a lot done. And then afterwards, I send you an email with everything that we talked about. You have like a little protocol. If you want another session, call me, we'll do another session. But that's kind of how that works. But I am thinking about doing like a group, kind of like a Facebook thing, or I don't know, I have to like figure out how I can do that, specifically for weight loss during the summer, to try to like cut through all of this kind of stuff for you guys and get you really just striving for optimal health to where you know what you're doing, right? Okay, so that's it. Make sure that you've, in, you've asked your three people to come up for grabs this time, or these two. I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, oh my God, um, my brain. I'm gonna see you next Saturday at 11. If Sundays works better for you guys, please let me know because I'm really trying to do these lives with as many people as possible. Um, I really like seeing you guys here. I'm really, from the bottom of my heart, it, it, it's really touching. It's moving that like, oh, you know, I don't know. It's just, I was always so afraid to start these lives in the first place. So the fact that, you know, I'm doing them every week and I have people that are, that are learning and liking them and, and coming back, it means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you, Cleo. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, DM me. If you want to know about the collagen um, that I talked about earlier, D DM me the word collagen. Um, what else? Oh, and if you want to know about that Prolon, the Dr. Walter Longo Prolon Fast, um, DM me the word Prolon, and I will get you that link as well, and I will see you guys next week. I'm not sure what next week's going to be, I will, but I think it might be hair, because I'm on this stuff for my hair that is, my hair's growing like crazy right now. Um, so it might be on hair loss, um, but I'm gonna think, it might be on intermittent fasting. So you guys, I'm always open for suggestions. So let me know what you guys wanna talk about as a holistic nutrition and health coach and a gerontologist and even a 500 hour yoga instructor. There is so much that in terms of topics 
that I can cover. So if there's something that you wanna know, and I don't claim to know everything, but I know where to go to find the answers, you know, the legitimate places to go, which I hope that you're learning as well. You guys, have a great rest of your Sunday. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.